say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. The living word of God. It's not only about God, it is God. I believe he is who he says he is. I believe he can do what he says he can do. I believe I am who he says I am. I believe I have what he says I have. I believe I can do what he says I can do. His word is alive, powerful, seed for my faith, full of faith. Today, I act on the word of God. Today, I decree I am a believer with all rights, all covenants to this book. Today, I confess I am more than a conqueror. I believe I am. Because he says, I am more than a conqueror. Today, I believe I walk by faith and not by sight. I act on this word and my life changes. Today, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. Those of you that were here last week, we're going to pick that message up later. But... Whenever I get a demand on my spirit at 2.30 in the morning, I always know God has decided to shift. So if he decides to shift, I will shift when God shifts. So today we're going to move into 1 Kings. Go to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. And what God is beginning to show me is that I'm preaching and telling you who Jesus is. But for some reason, some of you are not putting enough demand on the anointing. Not putting enough demand on the anointing of the living God, and you're not understanding that God is a God that desires to do miracles every day in every situation. Uh, beginning on Tuesday, we're going to go in and consecration. Those of you, especially all my ministers, but anybody in the church, you're going to need some financial breakthroughs right now. God called me into uh, consecration. We're going to begin Tuesday. I was going to begin Monday, but because you may be doing things with Veterans Day, we want to honor people who have made this country the great country it is and allows us to have freedom. Freedom is not free. People Amen. die for us to have freedom, and you do not want to take it for granted. Amen? Amen? So when I woke up this morning, I knew God was talking if I can't go back to sleep, so I always know to yield to him. Some of you have begun to walk with God in a place where he wakes you up early in the morning to talk with you and begin to tell you what he's doing. So go to the fourth chapter in the book, uh, Second Kings, and I'll begin reading. It says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything, hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door up on thee and upon thy sons, and shall somebody say, Shut the door. Shut the door. No, he said, Shut the door up on thee and upon thy son. Hmm, I just picked up something. And shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went <coughs> from him and shut the door upon her and upon her son, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Somebody say stayed. stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go, sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. We're, we're just going to deal with the expectation of miracles. The expectation of miracles. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I need your help, Holy Spirit. Release, Lord God, that which you have called for this house today. 
touch every heart. Let this seed, Lord God, the word of faith, ignite what is necessary in their lives, in their possession, to move the mountains that are set before them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I need you now, Lord. Amen, amen. It is very important that when you begin to operate in faith, we've been preaching on Jesus and whatever you ask in the Father's name and lift up Jesus, but there are some times and situations in your life that you're going to need to move your faith and move things. I wanted to move into faith because the just shall live by faith. And you know our vision is empowering people to live by faith that they may enjoy the righteousness of God. And I told you that a lot of those scriptures, they came from originally from Matthew, where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. And in layman terms, means spiritual renewal brings about economic revitalization. And one of my favorite scriptures is Romans 1, 16 and 17. And that is the scripture that says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to whosoever believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And then it says, for it is written, the just shall live by faith. So you have no other operation of living except by faith. And faith is not believing strong. Faith is a tangible power that creates things. It's the tangible power that makes things come into existence. It's the tangible power that brings anything that's in this book to life. does not matter what it is. If it's a miracle of healing, if it's a miracle of finances, whatever it is, it brings tangible things to life. But what we need to see in our text here, we find that in this particular place, it made some specifics in the Old Testament when we're dealing with Elisha. Now, I'm not talking about Elijah. Elijah was the one who Elisha followed and waited, and when Elijah was taken up into the chariots, he dropped his mantle, and he had a double portion of the anointing of Elijah. We're talking about Elisha here. I'm going to hit Elijah a little later here. But nevertheless, it says, a certain woman. A certain woman. Not, not any woman, not just some by, fly-by-night person, but it's always a specific. Look at somebody and say, I'm important to God. See, he says a certain woman. That means that he is identifying that somebody had a relationship with God. And she identified herself and said something very powerful. She said, you know my husband. I had a relationship. You know how he lived. In other words, I'm one with him anyway. So you know what he was and who he was. And he said, what do you have? She thought she had nothing but oil. Whenever you expect God to do supernatural things, you have to quit looking for things that come from the outside because God is not surprised by the situation. He has already prepared everything in you. That child that is born from a baby, all you don't have to tell him to walk. All you got to do is show him somebody walk, and he will start walking on his own. You ain't got to tell him, walk, walk, he don't have to tell him. You ain't got to tell him, talk, talk, it's already there. All he needs to do, now you got to give him the right information to know what word to say. Because he, he'll say the wrong words if you give him a lot of bad words because he is going to recreate what he hears from the outside. But what we need to understand that in this particular text, he says a certain woman. I want you to know this, that your need is the greatest soil for your miracle. Your need is the greatest soil for your miracle. Stop thinking that it's not like, oh, I don't want to go to God. He, you know, all needy. You know, how many of you met needy people? You know, you meet them and you say, hello, how you doing? And then two weeks later, they need you. Have you ever met people like that? Needy people. Well, needy people are good people because you know exactly where they are. <laughs> but God says, I'll meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. And we find out that the glory is where? Within you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Somebody say Christ. Christ. Say the anointed, one the anointed one and his anointing. You need to recognize that there's something inside of you that can create. And that there's something in your hand that has the ability. Somebody say seed faith. See, the problem is many of you are looking for financial miracles, but you eat all of your seed faith. You, you spend it all. You don't have no oil in the house. You don't spend it all. Everything. You, you, I mean, you go to a restaurant after a restaurant. You go here, you go there. You got to have the latest this, the latest that. But you're not sowing no seed. 
But then you wonder why you're not getting a big increase on your money. You're only getting what you are. If your money is the same as the sinner's money and you're not doing more with yours, there is a breakdown in the anointing on your money because your money is supposed to go further. If they need 20% to buy a house, you don't need but 35 and you got to quit thinking like the world thinks because your money is anointed and connected to God. But if you think it's not, then it's not. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is. If you think that you have to do what they do, I don't care what they do. My God said he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can even think what they said. Or able what I can ask. I only know how to ask for a house. I didn't know I need to be asking for an eight-bedroom apartment. I didn't know I needed apartment building. Who told me I just have to buy single family homes? Who said I need to qualify for that? I need to go somewhere where I can qualify for a 15 unit apartment building. They got them everywhere else up and down the street. Why can't my God give one to me? Why I gotta be running around thinking about a garage? Hey Amen, somebody say God. Oh my God, God, he said say God. So he, he asked her what did she have? And this relationship thing with God is very important because it goes on and on. Now it's doing something different, right? It's okay? All right. This the relationships with God that you set up with the people of God and in a unity of God, they continue. Somebody say they continue. So relationships count. They're very important. This is what I need you to understand. When a problem came, it was important that her position was correct. And she was positioned next to God, connected to a man that was connected to God. So her position is important. Positioning is everything. So when you're in Christ, you're positioned where? Next to God. For he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is your advocate. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. As he is in heaven, so are we on this earth. Somebody say, I just believe it. So if I'm right next to the position of the person that I can talk to, why shouldn't more be happening on my behalf? Now, I mean, there's some things you don't need to happen. You really don't need a jet right now. You don't know nobody that's going to pick you up at the airport when you get there. So you really don't need a jet. That's not what you need right now. Now, you might need a business that can produce money and later down the road, because somebody heard about your business, you'll need a jet to get there to show them your business or a better car or driver or whatever. But right now, you just need the business. Say the business. See, and that's what he gave her. He gave her something that was in her hand. He said, what you got? Because God didn't leave you left empty. He left you something to work with. No matter where you at, he left you something to work with because he loved you. He's going to leave you something to work with. So he left him something to work with. And she said, I got some oil. And he said, not only did she have oil, she had some credibility and she knew some people because the credibility reached past her into her children. And the children went out and borrowed the vessels. Say, borrowing ain't always bad. Don't, don't let the devil tell you not to borrow, because if he told you not to borrow, America wouldn't be America if they didn't have a borrowing plan set up, because you wouldn't be able to buy nothing. Everything you own of any tangible amount has been borrowed. If it's a car, you had to borrow a little loan. If it's a house, most people ain't going in buying a house a long time ago where you can go take 8000 and buy a house. You can't take 8000 and buy a house today. But So more than likely, borrowing is necessary, and that's called good debt. That's okay. So she had the ability to borrow. Somebody say, make sure your relationships stay consistent. That's very important because that has something to do with her position. Now, the other thing she did, she had to be obedient because it didn't make sense. It made faith. That don't make sense. I got one bottle of oil, and you told me go borrow as many as I can and start pouring it. Now, that just don't even make sense. What you want me to do, pour it and put water in it or what? what, what the, you know, because if, if I put water in it, it's not going to burn. It's not going to be oil. But it requires an action on your part, and that's what we don't like. We don't like that part with God. We don't want to have to do nothing. Just do for me, God. The parts that I have to do. I might go for a house or something. Well, you're going to have to discipline your credit if you want a house. I, if God said, I'll give you a house, now what that mean? Oh, now I'm going to run all my credit cards up because God said I'm going to get a house. No. 
the opposite, get you some information as to how it operates. But once you do your action, it's very important that you do like she did. She did something else. After she borrowed everything, she shut the door. See, because now I got to go with God. See, you got to cut the dollars out and have faith people around. People that are in the operation. Don't let everybody in your business when you believe it from God. Shut the door. Let people out, especially when you get in a crisis. Crisis, only take a couple people in a crisis. She didn't go all up and down the street. Oh, my husband, oh, my husband. She said, let me find an anointed man of God. Uh, this is my crisis. What should we do? You got to know who to go to because your position is with God. So he's got somebody that he is already positioned to help you. So when you have to go to him, they will respond. He's got somebody. I, we had a situation. We had to do something. I called one person, sent the plan. They responded because God already positioned them able to respond. I didn't have to go all the way around the house. I didn't have to go to the world. I could have went to a cousin, go to the world. Oh, yeah, we got it, but what's happening? I, I don't have to explain. I can go to somebody right now. Bam, get it resolved because God will position people around you to do what needs to be done. And then you join in and you get ready. Somebody say get ready. Then after she went into obedience, because it included her, she closed the door. You got faith, people. When you close the door, after it completed, she returned the report to the man of God. I've got to move ahead, hurry. Go to 1 Kings, 17th chapter. We're going to look at Elijah. Somebody say a miracle. Go to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. If you get a chance, read that whole 17th chapter. Make that be your business this week. Read the whole 17th chapter of 1 Kings. I'm only going to look at a couple verses because of time's sake. Nevertheless, this is Elijah. How many of you guys heard of Elijah? Elijah is also mentioned in the book of James, how he had enough faith, the Bible says, that he prayed that it wouldn't rain and that you could do the same thing. See, but your, your rain is always connected to money. Water and rain is connected to money. Say water and rain is connected to life, prosperity, and abundance. So if you go into Las Vegas hotels, there's going to be money flowing because it shows flow. Money is the flow. Money is flowing. Water is flowing. So when he called for rain, you can call for what you need but you always want to know that God has already placed something inside of you to produce it. You don't never have to ask God for money. You never have to ask him for money. Don't think you need to. You just want the right position to get the money you need. But you don't need the money because money is not the same everywhere, but wealth is the same everywhere. Riches are the same everywhere. What they trade in this country is not what they trade. The same dollar bill that you take from America, if you go to China, they'll tell you the American one is good, but if you go to the wrong country, Jamaica, and get it and go to China and try to spend it, they'll say, oh, no, 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 you take that to the, to the transfer station here. We're going to have to take this to money transfer to find out what that's worth because it's say a 1,000, but that's really three pennies over here. That means you got to try, but now the American dollar, people take it everywhere. Say, I'm positioned right. Ah, oh, you're positioned right. You're positioned right. See, position is important. So when you're in Christ, you're already positioned above all. Bless going, bless coming. The wealth and riches are upon you. So you're going to ask God, what do you want me to do to produce what I know I'm supposed to be doing on the inside? See, you have to ask. She knew that it was something wrong with accepting her sons just being sold. In the 17th chapter, of 1 Kings, beginning in the 8th verse. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Elijah, say, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now he says, God says, I have already commanded somebody there. Say, God always has a person in position. So people who don't want people around and don't, I don't like to ask nobody, I don't need nobody, you're going to be broke, you're going to have problem on top of problem, because you don't need nobody, but you was created to communicate with people, and he's going to give you brothers and sisters in Christ so that you can have faith people to agree. One of the most powerful prayers there is is the agreement of faith prayer. 
touch and agree with me. He said, if any two of you touch and agree, I'll be there. I just need two of you to come in agreement. So it's very important that you have that. So then when we go a little further, he says, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. Now that's, that, now, now that's powerful. She just said she had just enough to make one cake for herself and her son to eat it and die. And then she done told him the problem, and he's getting ready to tell her how to produce a miracle through obedience and action. No, she still needs to go make the cake, but you can't eat the cake. You still got to go make the money, but you can't eat the tithe. All right, you, you still, you, you still got to do it, but you can't eat it. You got to turn it over to the anointing. You got to turn it over to the man of God. He said, no, 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 no. And said, then you're going to make you one. So she had to go in obedience, say in faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means expected and the evidence of things not seen. So I can't see it. So now he just told her to walk in faith. Because he said, no, 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 no. Uh, he, he said, no, no, never mind all that. Just go make it for me and bring it to me. And later you guys eat. Now, you know most of y'all ain't going for that. So we're not even going to try that. You know, That's like somebody telling you, pay my rent, and tomorrow God's going to pay yours. You, I ain't going for it either. I'm, I'm just saying, sometimes your faith ain't there. But, <laughs> I mean, but that's the same thing as what happened. But if you understand the anointing and if you're in a place of blessing, that might be the test that comes your way. I don't know what your test is because you may have the means that even if you didn't pay it, you could go get it and pay it, which means that might be your test. That might be your test. You say, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. Your test might be that because your resources are in place. So if you give you a test, he's always going to make sure you're in a place to accomplish the test so that you can move to the next level of faith. And faith has to move through stages. You know, you, you remember when you first got faith, you got a job, you didn't go to the top job. You waited till you felt a little something, then you went to another job. When you first got your nice car, you, you, you know you got a, uh, I can't say the word hoopty, what do you call it? Uh, it's a hoopty? <laughs> I had a hoopty, I mean, I had one that in the rain, you had to get outside and hold a screwdriver to start. Somebody gave me that hoop tea. <laughs> but anyway, in the rain, I'm all dressed up in the rain outside. <laughs> I had one I had to park around the corner. Because <laughs> I couldn't get out that side. I had to get out the other side and walk around there. That's, that's the, I was real young then. So don't think this is not, this didn't happen 10 years, 20 years ago, way back. But what I'm saying is there was a time that I had to walk through that. And I had to go. I still got there. I just had to park around the corner, but I still knew I had to keep living. Somebody say keep living. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, he says that I may eat it and die. Yeah. <coughs> and Elijah said unto her, fear not. Say fear not. Fear See, not. that means be in faith. Don't be in fear. He said just go do it. So when God begins to tell you to do something, just do it. Don't have your fear. Don't make reservations for fear as to how it's going to go wrong because that's the way you've been doing it. Don't matter. Just, just act on it. Just, 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 just move up on it. Start moving forward. Somebody say move forward. And it's very important I, for whoever this might be for right now. When God starts moving, I'm going to tell you something. J Jesus, when he went by people, follow me. He ain't got time to stop. Follow me. You, you, I, we'll talk about it when you finish following. You know, when God starts telling you something, start moving. Stop trying to add, get him to sit down and explain everything to you. Do you know all that? Because now to give you the same thing even in this text. Elijah was walking. Elisha seen him. And Elisha said, I need to do this. No, 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 no. Just come on. Let's go. Just go. 
We're going places. You got to know when God starts telling you something, you got to start going. You can't be praying around trying to question God and stuff. And, well, what if this happened? And what if that happened? No, you just got to move. Somebody say, I'm fortifying my faith. I'm, uh, I'm going to give you some, some, some instructions for this week. And I'll be in here in prayer. But we're getting ready to fortify our faith because we're moving into a bigger level right now. And you're going to be the people that move up. See, people think that people make you go up. But God always used persons one by one. And he elevates them to go up. So then the church goes up. You, he's going to elevate each one of you. Some of you need to get a business soon. You've been working for people long enough. You need to be in control of more money. Need to be in control of more money. I still write to this day when, when I do my taxes on a job. I, they say, how many, how many withdrawals do you need? I say, put the maximum amount. I put the maximum amount that won't turn them off. <laughs> if you go over eight, they're going to call you in. <laughs> I put seven on there. So at the end of the year, they say, you know what? You didn't take out enough. I said, oh, I didn't. They said, no. I said, no. I said, well, I'll call the IRS and make a deal with them. I'll pay them $75 a month till it's paid off. But I'll keep my money all year long so I can use it. See, I don't need you to send me no check next year. I'll keep my own now. Why I got to wait till next year to go buy a new sofa when I can buy one right now? You know what I mean? Why, why I got to wait till next year? When, when you'll make a deal with me. See, you'll make a deal with me. So I, uh, just give me mine now. Yeah, just, I don't want to look on there and see I made $2,000 and you took seven hundred. Yeah, they said, no, 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 just take your 130. Yeah, we, we'll see you down the road. So every year at the end of tax time, I said, well, just add it on the other one. Yeah, just add. We'll, 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 we'll go from 75 to 100. Yeah, but we're we going to pay you off every month. They send you the little letter, and they pay you off. But that's okay, because now you got more to work with. Somebody say, work with yours. That's why you got to have something you got to work with. Somebody say, work with it. All right, all right. <clears throat> and then he says, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Elijah was the one that had stopped the rain anyway. And then he says, it says, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Now, I, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but I want you to read it. Because that same miracle that that lady received, that after she received it, and the man of God was there, and the anointing was there, her son died. And she said, oh, now you done fed me, but you done killed my son. Now I got my son done died. You done fed me, but you done killed my son. And she blamed God. Elijah said, don't worry, I got this cup. Laid on him, he came back to life. God will restore what you lose if you trust him. He has a way to restore what you lose if you trust him. And he knows what you need before you need it. He knew what she had need of. You got to know when God has knows what you have need of. You think you need this, and you'll start trying to possess things that you can't possess. Because you can't possess people. But God knows what you need to help you through life when you get 75 years old, when you get 70 years old. Other people will try to tell you what you need, but God knows exactly who and what. Somebody say God. Now, what I need you to see in both of these texts is that both of them were in need. So being in need is a very normal function with God. So stop trying to, you hear all this stuff. You know, you go on these jobs and everybody's trying to retire. I'm going to retire, so I ain't going to need nothing. After I retire, I'm just going to enjoy my money, enjoy my money. And it's just so many people, their whole retirement fund and the whole nation is just screwed up something terrible. I mean, it's folks that ain't even getting half of the money that they're supposed to retire for. But they all lined up with this retirement thing. That's all they talk about every day. How many years you got in? Oh, I'm going to do another eight. I'm going to do another this. And they, half of them finish them and die. Yeah, and die. And then things happen. You get fired on the job. Oh, sorry, you know what? We're not going to give you your retirement. They got all kinds of ways to keep it. And your Social Security, they got a little game that they play with that. Then you go in there at 65 to get it, and they say, well, you know, if you wait to get 70, we'll give you an extra $300 a month. Yeah, but what if I die at 69? Yeah, then you don't get nothing. 
See, but between 65 and 70, you might get 80 grand to get an extra 300. No, 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 give me mine now. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna work with it now because they hope that the number go up. By the time you get 70, it's more, it's more likely that you're on your way out. So don't wait to 70. If you're if it's 63 and you need it, get it. So you can work with it, because it's yours, you can work with it. You know, they, they try to penalize you if you get it too early. If you get it at 62, they say, oh, no, no, you can't make more than this amount of money at 62. At 65, we'll give it all to you, though. So you can do how you want with that time based on where you are. But what I'm saying is, a lot of things are within your reach to begin to move in different areas of your finances, and you're gonna have to use faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is the word of God. How do we know? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So since you're going to be moving in a financial arena, I got to make sure you get some scriptures on wealth building. Scriptures, this in the book. Scriptures on finances. So you can start confessing it. Because when you confess it, the atmosphere changes. See, if, 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 if they bring in, uh, uh, what, what's her name, Taylor Swift to town. If they're going to bring Taylor Swift to town, you're going to start seeing billboards with Taylor Swift's name. You're going to hear Taylor Swift's name on the radio. Why? Because they want the atmosphere conducive so when she hit the ground, everything swarms to her. So if you're going to know that that's how they do it, when God downloads information from the pulpit and wakes somebody up in the morning to tell you, I'm ready to do miracles, then you start getting ready for your miracle. Start expecting the promotions and stuff. Not wondering if somebody come to you about a promotion. Uh, yes, I am in line. I'm going to start studying for that thing right now. I'm going to start positioning myself right now. If I, if, if, if I know I'm in position and I, I, I'm getting ready to buy a bigger house or a 10-bedroom house and I'm going to give downstairs to the women coming out of prison or whatever, whatever you're getting ready to do, start moving in that direction around people capable of bringing those things into existence. You capable, why? Because you're seated next to the God. You're seated in Christ. And I need you to start moving like that. You need to start moving. You know, don't just be talking crazy stuff. Talk big stuff. Stuff that touch people. Things that touch people. Stop thinking about things that just touch you. You know, you, you, you don't have to look on everything because everybody's about their self. Have you ever seen that? There, there's no empathy no more. People are just apathetic. You know, they'd be ready to kill you on the highway. If you're trying to get in the lane, no, you ain't going nowhere. I ain't going to stop you from getting where you're going. Just let me in, man. You know what I mean? But me frowning at you and stuff. You don't even want me to get in the lane. So, I mean, that's terrible. You get on the job, they hate you for no reason. You just got there and you hating on me. Why? So you've got to get to a place where you start moving in the anointing and knowing that this is the season for elevation. Somebody say a season for elevation. Season, look, look for big things right now. Look for big things. When you from getting where you going, just let me in, man. You know what I mean? But me frowning at you and stuff. I, you don't even want me to get in the lane. So I mean, that's terrible. You get on the job, they hate you for no reason. You just got there and you hating on me. Why? So you've got to get to a place where you start moving in the you from getting where you going, just let me in, man. You know what I mean? But me frowning at you and stuff. I, you don't even want me to get in the lane. So, I mean, 